Hello and welcome back to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me again on another episode. And if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing to my channel, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that and it's really helping me with my channel. Today we've come a bit further north than we usually do. So we're up in the Highlands of Scotland. We've come to a very well-known place, which is Loch Ness. And you may have heard of that because of the Loch Ness Monster, um, the famed mythical creature that lives in the loch um, and has never been proven. <laughs> so yep, we've come to a village called Drummadrocket and we are going for a walk in the woods, hopefully getting down to the shores of the loch itself. Now we might have to cross a river, so I've got some sandals with me just in case because I think we're going to have to do some river crossing. But um, yeah, it should be good. We're going to have a little woodland walk. We're going to obviously have a look out for the Loch Ness Monster and there might even be a castle as well to take a look at. So let's head out and see what we find today. a stick already well done you're gonna go looking for the Loch Ness monster today you're gonna make friends okay let's go Go to the right. Let's go to the right. Hey, Jack. Come this way.
green and blue sky. You can tell you're in Scotland, right? This was actually a really nice discovery to make, this woodland walk. Um, Drumnadrocket is quite a touristy place. It's really busy because you've got Loch Ness and you've got the castle, um, so it does get very busy. But this is so quiet, I think we're the only ones here. So this is a really lovely experience, just getting away from the tourist trail a little bit. Another fork in the road. Hey Jack, which way? This way? Or this way? Oh, Jack doesn't know. <laughs> There's a surprise. Come on, we're gonna go this way. It's also quite nice today that we don't have a kind of set route, there's just a few paths through this whole woodland, so we're just sort of following our noses and seeing where we get to and having a bit of an explore, so it's a bit of a relaxing walk compared to some of the ones that we do. So if that's the river that we've got to cross, it's looking pretty low at the moment. I think it's been quite dry recently, so that's why it's quite low. This whole woodland actually floods at high water. So all the trees here kind of love the water and they grow naturally in wet habitats. But yep, quite dry at the moment. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to get across the river and get down to the loch. Another path. Hey puppy dog. Come on, then we're going to go this way. Jack is happy with that choice. <laughs> Hi, 
This is where the two rivers running through the wood, called Coyote and Enric, converge. If it wasn't such a dry period, this would have been a lot more difficult to cross. We could see these tiny fish darting around in the shallow pools of the stream. They might be minnows, or maybe salmon fry, about to embark on a long journey through the loch and out to sea. What do you reckon, Jack? Can I make it? From this sheltered cove, it's hard to grasp just how big Loch Ness is. 
By volume, it's the largest body of water in the British Isles, and it contains more water than all the lakes in England and Wales combined. That's a lot of water for a mythical monster to hide in. The legend of the Loch Ness Monster seems to have originated in ancient times, with the first written reference appearing in 565 AD. The legend was popularised by the press in the 1930s, and ever since, the idea of the Loch Ness Monster has enchanted and intrigued visitors to Scotland. There you have it, that's Loch Ness. The beautiful Loch Ness in rain and sunshine. <laughs> Typical Scottish summertime. So we've made it down here, we've had a look at the view. Jack's had a brilliant time swimming. And now I think we're gonna head back through the woodland and we're gonna do a bit more exploring in Drumnadrocket and see if we can find a path up to maybe a viewpoint where we can look down on the loch because it is a really, really beautiful view from up there too. Jack is still having a brilliant time swimming as you can probably hear. But yeah, how beautiful is it? Yeah, just over there is Irkut Castle. That's the sunshine. <laughs> so we're probably not going to go into Irkut Castle today. You can't take dogs in. It is a really, really cool ruin to explore. But obviously, if we can't take Jack in, it's not very fair on him. So we'll just have a look from the outside and probably tell you a bit more about the history. But yeah, that's it for now. We're going to head back through the woods and I will catch you in a bit. Puppy dog. Come on, pups, we've had enough swimming for today. Come on.
dramatic ruin of Urquhart Castle sits on a promontory of land, presiding over Loch Ness as it stretches into the distance. The castle we see today dates back to the 1200s, and, like many castles in Scotland, during its turbulent history, it changed hands many times between Scottish and English control. In 1688, the Catholic King James VII and II was driven into exile, which prompted the first of many Jacobite risings, a string of armed attempts to restore the Catholic Stuart line, Urquhart Castle became a garrison for government forces until 1692, at which time the towering gatehouse was deliberately blown up so that the castle could never again be used as a military stronghold. So that's us nearly done now, we're just heading back to the car and probably about time for some coffee and cake, I think. Only a short one today, covered a couple of miles but we did get those amazing views over Loch Ness and the castle. We had sunshine, we had showers, we had all the Scottish summertime weather. I do have something specific in mind to paint from today's area and today's walk. I'll cover that in more detail when we get to the studio, but um, yeah, it's gonna be something a little bit different today. But yeah, we're gonna head back now and I think we're gonna go to one of our favorite ever cafes. I've had a few people saying recently that they missed the coffee and cake cafe stop. And I think it's just because with it being summertime, we're doing a lot more evening walks because it's too hot for Jack during the day a lot of the time. So that's why we've maybe not made it to a cafe. But we do have time for it today. So we're gonna take you to one of our favorite cafes in the Highlands. I can't wait to show you it. So I will catch you there. Otherwise, I will see you back in the studio. to everyone who's donated via my Ko-fi page. It helps me to keep supporting amazing local businesses like this. We love this cafe because the ladies who run it are so friendly and they always have a sausage for Jack. While I found lots of interesting things to photograph on this walk, I decided to show you a painting I did for one of my viewers, Sue Adams, of the YouTube channel Adams Family Pursuits. Sue is a brilliant photographer and took this shot of a robin while visiting Urquhart Castle, so I thought it would make sense to show this painting today. There is a link to Sue and her partner's YouTube channel in the video description below. If you like history, wildlife photography or crafting, please do check them out and give them a sub. Thank you so much to Sue for trusting me with this commission and allowing me to share it with you today. As usual, I start by blocking in areas using the lightest shade I will need. It's unlikely that I will ever leave the page white unless there is a shiny reflection to capture.
robin's head is the focal point of the composition, with its beady eye and wide open beak. This is where the viewer's eye will be drawn to, so I made sure to take my time getting it right. Doing the eye is always a nerve-wracking moment, which is why I like to do it as early as possible in the painting. I like to start by making it too small, as I can always make it bigger, but there's no way to make it smaller once the paint is on the page. At this point it might seem like I'm not doing much, but this is just as important as any other stage of the painting, making lots of small adjustments to make sure it all works together. If I didn't do this part, it would look unfinished and jarring to the eye.
Tatsu has kindly allowed me to offer prints of this piece on my Etsy store. If you wish to support my channel, you can do this by buying a print, liking, commenting or subscribing, or by donating via my Ko-fi page. All links are in the video description below. Not quite ripe yet. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, hello. You're not my dog. <laughs> Jack, hi, this way. <laughs> oh, Jack. What have you got on your face? What have you got on your face, puppy dog? Come here. Oh dear. <laughs>